in the Superior Court of Irwin County, Georgia, in the indictment 2017 CR 027, the State of Georgia versus Ryan Alexander Duke, with the jury find the defendant count one malice murder. Thirty-year-old Tara Grinstead was last seen October 22nd when she attended a local pageant. Her home sits locked, car in driveway, even her dog left outside. Only her purse and keys are missing, leading many to suspect she left with someone she knew. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. I call her your Royal Highness because I think it is a very nice honor. Tara Grinstead, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Miss Tifton, get ready to go over to Columbus and represent Tifton over there. Are you excited? Oh, yes, very excited. What about preparation? What have you done to prepare for this? What haven't I done? I have uh, worked on my interview. I have exercised. I've shopped for clothes and clothes and clothes. And I just tried to get prepared for a lot of hard work the week at Miss Georgia. I'm an 11th grade history teacher at Irwin County High School, and I also have a cheerleading squad of junior varsity cheerleaders, 9th and 10th graders. Uh, I just completed my first year teaching, and I, I loved every bit of it. In the small southern town of Asilla, Georgia, the disappearance of a young woman named Tara Grinstead shook the close-knit community and stumped investigators. Grinstead was only 30 years old when she mysteriously vanished on October 22, 2005, and for 12 years, nobody could figure out what had happened. Let me give you just a little bit of background. I know the folks that are here in the community know all this, but just to recap some of this, on Saturday, October 22, 2005, Tara Grinstead went missing from her residence. The Osceola Police Department responded to her residence. Immediately, they suspected foul play. Tara Grinstead, Irwin County High School teacher and former beauty pageant contestant, had a huge impact on the tiny town of Osceola, population 3,300. So much so that her disappearance almost two weeks ago has galvanized this community. The GBI has interviewed Tara's ex-boyfriend of six years, as well as a former student who broke into her home recently. But those who knew the beautiful, generous young woman say if someone did snatch Tara, it could be almost anyone. All the guys in our school like Miss Tara. She is beautiful. She is somebody everybody wants to be like, so that might have something to do with her. The last time that anyone had seen or heard from Tara Grinstead was on the Saturday night that she went missing. Investigators knew that she had been with the young pageant girls she mentored in her home, and then attended the pageant together. They knew also that around 8 p.m., Tara Grinstead stopped by her neighbor's house for half an hour, and finally headed to a cookout a few blocks away from her home. She left to go home at around 10.30 p.m. The fact that police found the clothes she wore to the cookout bunched up on her bedroom floor told them that she had returned home that evening. Also, her purse and keys were missing, which led authorities to believe that she may have left with someone she knew. Authorities then considered boyfriends or romantic involvements. The first person police looked into was Tara Grinstead's ex-boyfriend, Army Ranger Marcus Harper. Harper and Grinstead had a tumultuous six-year relationship. During that time, both Grinstead and Harper dated other people, but family and close friends say that Grinstead was truly in love with Harper. Did there come a time when this dating relationship ended? Yes. She told me she felt like it was time for, for her to move on. And you're getting dumped, essentially? More or less. Were you upset by that at all? <laughs> at first, uh, we continued to remain friends, but uh, I felt a little rejected at first, but I picked, you know, brushed my shoulders off, went on and started dating other people. 
Two weeks before she disappeared, Harper ended things with her for good. The last time he saw her was a week before she went missing, and Harper claimed that she came to his home to beg for him to take her back. Harper also had a legitimate alibi. On the night of Grinstead's disappearance, he had been at a bar with a former cop partner. As the hours turned into days, days into weeks, weeks into months, and eventually months into years, the search efforts never ceased. Through these 11 plus years, the GBI and other law enforcement officers have received hundreds and hundreds of tips. Each lead was thoroughly exhausted. Unfortunately, all of these leads ended with a dead end until the last couple of days. In her early interview, Brooks Sheridan had come forward with information regarding her boyfriend, who was an ex-student of Grinstead's. His name was Bo Dukes. I felt like I was going to be sick. I didn't know who I was staring at. I didn't know who he was. Bo confided to Brooke that his friend, Ryan Duke, had told him that he had killed Tara Grinstead back in 2005. Ryan convinced Bo to help him dispose of her body. Why would Ryan Duke have murdered Tara Grinstead? He said that's something that only God and Ryan know. And I knew that he would have probably served the rest of his life in jail. But that family's peace to me was more important than his freedom. Duke said that at the time his friend had convinced him to help dispose of the body. It was later revealed that Bo Dukes burned the body of Tara to cover up the crime. In his tape confession, Bo Dukes admitted to helping Ryan Duke and said they spent two days burning the body. He also admits to telling several people about Grinstead's death and what had happened. Dukes continued to say that Ryan Duke told him he strangled Grinstead on her bed. He said during the interview that they threw her keys and purse into a dumpster before disposing of her body. So the Terry Grinstead family, I'm truly sorry. Your long suffering has been unimaginable. My actions are cowardly, callous, and cruel. After being brought in for questioning in 2017, Ryan Duke openly admitted to the murder of Tara Grinstead in a verbal and written confession. During the confession, Ryan Duke admitted that the crime stemmed from a botched burglary attempt. Unaware of someone being home, he saw Tara's purse and the next thing he knew, she said something and touched him on the shoulder. He then swung and hit her with a fatal blow to the head. During the long confession, agents described Ryan detailed evidence only the killer would know, that was previously unknown to the public. A phone call from a payphone the following day to her home, Grinstead's missing purse, and last but not least, the latex glove. Unknown to many, the key component to the case was a white latex glove authorities found right outside Tara Grinstead's doorway while searching her house. When tested for DNA evidence, the glove had three unique DNA samples. One of Tara and two previously unknown, later to be matched and identified to Bo Dukes and Ryan Duke. Tomorrow, the trial surrounding the death of Tara Grinstead, the beauty queen and high school history teacher from Osceola, Georgia, is set to begin. She disappeared from South Georgia more than 16 years ago. Investigators say Ryan Duke confessed to killing Grinstead, but now his lawyers are expected to argue that was a false confession. The trial is expected to last more than a month. Though the authorities had their men, previous confessions and evidence failed to match. One example, according to Bo Dukes, Ryan purposely strangled Tara in her bed. However, in Ryan's confession, he struck her once in the head by accident leading to her death. Another example, according to earlier reports, authorities saw no sign of forced entry and assumed Tara had left with someone she knew before vanishing. However, also in Ryan's confession, he admitted the murder to being a failed break-in and burglary attempt. Bo Dukes should be sitting in that chair, not Ryan. Um, Bo Dukes should be on trial for the murder of Tara Grinstead, mm -hmm. not Ryan. Bo Dukes woke him up and said, I killed Tara. Not, I killed Miss Grinstead. I killed Tara. Bo Dukes was one of her students. 
Brian was not. So we've heard several witnesses, GBI witnesses come, and even folks who went into the house Monday morning come and tell you that they recognized uh, that there was no sign of a struggle inside the house. None. The state's theory in this case is that this was a murderer. That lock is important because we learned that Tara Grinstead's greatest fear was being attacked at night. We know on Monday morning, Joe Portier shows up with the spare key from next door. That door is locked from the outside. He turns the key and opens it. That tells us that interior lock was never locked that night. That means Tara Grinstead was never inside that house, and that was not a crime scene. She left that house and locked the door behind her, took her purse and keys, and we don't know where she went, but we know she wasn't there. That interior lock is an important key fact in this case, and the GBI never found it. That interior lock is important for another reason, too. It can't be picked. Gary Rothwell told you that. You can't use a credit card to pick that lock. It's a hotel-style lock. It goes over like this, and it locks and it, from the inside, and you couldn't use a credit card to get it. So even, even if you assume that Ryan, Ryan's story about this credit card is true, it doesn't match up. Because if Tara's home inside, that door, that door lock is locked. And he's gonna, he, he can get the bottom lock picked maybe, but he's not gonna get that top one picked. Why are there no, why are there no fingerprints for, for Ryan on, on the door handle? Why are there no fingerprints or anything else inside the house from Ryan? Why is Ryan's DNA not in the house? So let's talk more about the glove. This is the state smoking gun, right? The glove. But what do we, what do we know about that glove? We know the state has about a single witness to tell you that it was on the ground before Monday morning. Not a one. They don't have a single person that came in here and told you that that glove was on the ground before Monday morning. We brought you some folks to tell you that on Sunday they didn't see it. Jared Luke walked to her front door Sunday evening to get a, a, a water bowl for the for the dog and to get the food. He said he walked up to the front door, he parked in the driveway, and then he walked up to the front door in a diagonal across the yard is what he said. He missed it. If it's on the ground at 9.30 in the morning on Sunday, and he goes there at 6 o'clock to deal with his dog, dog's uh, things, and he walks directly to the front door, and then back, he's missed it twice. And he said that was during daylight hours. So he, so two people now have missed this glove twice in broad daylight. That does not make common sense. In the Superior Court of Irwin County, Georgia, in the indictment 2017 CR 027, the state of Georgia versus Ryan Alexander Duke, we the jury find the defendant count one malice murder, not guilty. Count two, felony murder, not guilty. Count three, felony murder, not guilty. Count four, aggravated assault, not guilty. Count five, burglary, not guilty. Count six, concealing death of another, guilty. It is signed uh, this date, May 20th, 2022, and signed by the four person. All right, thank you, Ms. Ross. Uh, either side like the jury to be polled. 